Hey Kotaku, Evan Narsis here at PAX East 2015. We're going to take a look at a game that's about a vaporware, about a game that never came out. It's being made by some guys who worked on Bioshock. I'm here with Jordan Thomas and Steven Alexander, who are the lead creators in the game. Uh, talk to us about the Magic Circle. Jordan, why sure. make a game about vaporware? Well, uh, we've been in the industry for a long time, and uh, we've worked on a lot of unfinished worlds. And there was a sort of dramatic spark in the idea of one of those creatures staring it up at us, saying, are you going to finish this thing at any time, ever? You know. And so we sort of embraced the notion of, is there beauty in the unfinished you know, joke, essentially. Right, right. Um, and Stephen, talk to me visually about the, the game, because the, the, the graphics go from like a very low poly, old school approach to like a hand drawn, very artistic um, kind of uh, ideal. So what made you decide to like have these different uh, ideas about how to make the game look? Okay, well there's a, a lot of reasons for that actually. The, as far as the sort of hand drawn, sort of loose black and white world that, that makes up sort of what you encounter initially, that was uh, both sort of a thematic thing, it, it sort of shows the unfinished world in a very concrete way as sort of a, a loose sketch. Yeah, on the back um, of a napkin. Exactly, and, and sort of the, some of the earliest ideas for this game actually revolved around a whiteboard. So that sort of started the thinking and then it remained really appropriate when we got into making the actual game. And then the other stuff is sort of about the, the sort of the juxtaposition of the past of this game with the present. And so as you play this game, you start to uncover the history and so you encounter these other versions that existed at one point or another, as you can, because it's a 20 year game within our fiction, right? So there is a, a long history that you uncover. Right, so we're, we're basically going through the development history of this game that never came out. And we're trying to rescue bits of it, is that right? Yeah, you, you play the hero of the unfinished world who gets sick of waiting for the incompetent creators to actually make any decisions about yourself. You don't have boy or girl, warrior, wizard, none of those details, right? Right. So you wander off to go fix the game from the inside or cancel it. You're, oh, so you can cancel the game, too. Uh, suffice it to say, you set out to potentially do that. What actually happens, there are a lot of surprises. So this is the beginning of the game. Uh, we're trying to subvert a very specific cliche in the fantasy world, which is the burning village uh, where the, the, the hero is conveniently orphaned. So they don't have to form any personal connections with anybody. And so you sort of wander through that and very quickly start to see these people look placeholder. They, they have literal checkerboard textures on them and they say things that, that look like they are just stubbed in. And it gets snarkier and snarkier as you realize the developers are sniping at each other through that text. Uh, and then pretty quickly you actually encounter them kind of in the flesh, making changes to the world in real time. Now this is an actual player having an actual unscripted playthrough, so, you know, we will have to be patient. And I like how all the text says temp, you guys. And it will ship saying temp. So here is the classic heirloom sword moment where the hero is supposed to learn they have a great destiny, but then the actual game developers appear as these giant, what we call sky bastards. They come down and make awful changes and uh, essentially strip you of your agency, forcing this to become a very different game rather than Skyrim but terrible. And these, these two Sky Bastard developers are arguing. Yeah, the these. lead writer and the lead designer. And the lead writer is saying, if the player has a sword, they're going to murder this plot critical character, and then what will I do? And, the, and, and fortunately, he's in charge. The lead designer is saying, you are not going to make me cut weapons. Is this, are, is, are you sick? You realize this is the only gameplay we actually have. And they go back and forth, and eventually he sort of makes her do it. And she wants to get fired, so she has to sort of play ball in the short term. And eventually, they cut the weapons right out of your hand. Leading to a non-power fantasy game that becomes very much about stealing the tools of game development from them and slowly gaining more and more influence over the world in a creative sense. Here she goes. Zorch. <laughs> and that was the end of the classic hack and slash that this might have been. This game clearly has to come out, right? You can't make a game about vaporware and not have it come out. Yeah, if we announce a release date and then fail to meet it, I think we commit seppuku because we become our own joke. Yeah, be so, in fact, we have to make sure that when we announce, we actually say sorry for the delay, and then we stick to that date as if it is uh, ripped by God. Yeah. Right, you, only get, you, you can only delay it once, right? Exactly. Like that's it. Awesome. All right, so that's a quick look at the Magic Circle. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, thank you.